In Asia, there is a single cause of mental deficiency and physical deformity that threatens one person in five. And the price of protection for a year is what each might pay for a cup of tea. Some 200 million are affected. Of them, 46 million incurably. 500 million are at risk. The figures numb the mind, but they must spur us to action. Not just because the cases are countless, but because each is tragic and all are avoidable. The name of the scourge is Iodine Deficiency Disorders, or IDD. A simple sounding nutritional lack. Over a lifetime, the body needs as little as a teaspoon of iodine, but it must be consumed in the right amounts every day. The problem can occur anywhere. Surveys by institutions such as the All India Institute of Medical Sciences have shown it exists in urban pockets too. At some schools in New Delhi, the Indian capital, one in four of the pupils are iodine deficient. For many of them, this will limit their capacity for intellectual growth. This boy has not been able to complete the intelligence test after four minutes. The average time is 30 seconds and the maximum permissible is two minutes. It suggests an IQ of less than 70. The implications are devastating. Entire populations in many regions that are considered backward could be so because of an inadequate intake of iodine in the diet. Large numbers can suffer from subtle forms of mental retardation not immediately visible. This inhibits their ability to absorb vital development inputs. <laughs> the most visible manifestation of iodine deficiency is an enlargement of the thyroid gland at the base of the neck. Now, let's have a look at his neck. Apparently, it looks normal. Ask him to extend his neck and then ask him to swallow. You will see something. बेटे अपने गर्दन ऊपर कर लो और थोक घेट लो थोक घेट लो गर्दन ऊपर करके कैन यू सी समथिंग मूविंग बेटे दोबारा कर लो तुम घुट लो तुम घुट लो गर्दन ऊपर करके कैन यू सी समथिंग दैट इज अगेन एन एनलार्ज थायराइड ग्लैंड द थायराइड इज अ बटरफ्लाई शेप्ड एंडोक्रिन ग्लैंड एट द बेस ऑफ द नेक व्हेन द कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ आयोडीन इन द ब्लड स्ट्रीम इज लो इट एनलार्जेस इन एन अटेम्प्ट टू इंक्रीज इट्स एक्सट्रैक्शन Iodine is used by the thyroid to produce the thyroid hormone, thyroxine. 
This is essential for normal growth and healthy body functions, while a normal thyroid gland cannot be seen or felt. Some 1 in 15 people in Asia have enlarged thyroid glands. 35 million are children. To most people, including those in the medical practice, this is known as goiter. This occurs because of deficiency of iodine conceived from a distance, increased to this extent. So this is essentially <coughs> body's adaptation to very severe to iodine deficiency. <laughs> Sundar Singh is five years old, a cretin, one who is both mentally retarded and physically deformed. Cretins are born to their condition if the mother is deficient in iodine during pregnancy. Sundar is an only child to Manmaya and Hasta Bahadur in a culture where a handicap is accepted as a part of the cosmic purpose. There is humanity, compassion, and a quiet suffering without the urgency of a modern worldview. External interventions cannot be believed easily to help. This is a philosophy that consoles its victims, where science and development strategies find it difficult to penetrate. Sundar Singh is born to a life in which he can never be self-sufficient or capable of human responses, needs and perhaps desires that we take so much for granted. I don't know why this happened or what to do about it. We found out something was seriously wrong when we took Sundar to the hospital for treatment of diarrhea. Now it is all in God's hands. Cretinism is caused by a deficiency of iodine during pregnancy. The fetus produces its own thyroid hormone from the iodine it draws from the mother. Its deficiency retards growth and affects the development of the brain in particular. What you see here is the difference between the brain development of a normal fetus on the left and one that is deprived of iodine. Fetuses of iodine deficient mothers often perish in the womb. Most die within a week after birth. If they survive this period, they remain intellectually subnormal, tend to suffer from stunted growth, death mutism, physical deformities, and other neurological problems. The Sergio family have known iodine deficiency for generations. Today, 11 of the 15 members have some iodine deficiency disorder. A farming family, their typical day is slow, cumbersome, laborious, untouched by optimism or hope. While the subsequent adequate intake of iodine can reduce the size of most goiters, cretinism and other problems from birth cannot be reversed. <laughs> Once thought to be confined to the mountain slopes, today vast tracks down to the coastal plains are iodine deficient. Iodine is one of the natural minerals of the earth. But if the soil is depleted of iodine, the populations that it supports with food and water will lack it too, no matter what they might grow on it. The original event that robbed the soil of its iodine was prehistoric glaciation from the high mountain ranges. But the imperatives of development 
increasing populations, deforestation, consequent floods, and new farming techniques have all aggravated the problem, creating new endemic areas. If the scourge of IDD is to be ended, there is a need to supplement with iodine the nutritional intake of entire populations. As the body does not retain any iodine it does not immediately need, this has to be in regular, predictable quantities at a cost that is feasible and in a form that is universally acceptable. Salt, a powerful and emotive symbol in many Asian cultures, evoking images of self-reliance, of loyalty and goodness. Mahatma Gandhi used it at Dandi to capture the imagination of an oppressed people against colonial rule. Today, salt can provide liberation from another form of oppression. Salt is every man's spice and essential to life. Adding iodine to salt can ensure easy availability of the right amount of iodine every day. It is consumed regularly in predictable quantities by virtually everyone. It is widely acceptable. There is no change in color or taste and no risk of overdosage. Adding iodine to salt is a simple process using low cost, easily available technology. Potassium iodate solution is sprayed or mixed with refined salt. The World Health Organization has recommended a strength of 40 parts per million at the point of iodation to compensate for losses in transportation so that at least 15 parts per million reach the consumer. This is a million times less than what could lead to an overdosage of iodine. Potassium iodate dissolves more easily in water than salt so care needs to be taken to ensure that iodated salt is dated and packed, sealed from moisture in plastic bags. The iodation of all salt holds out the best strategy to reach everyone. Surveys have revealed that iodine deficiency is far more widespread than was first thought. In some measure, we are all at risk. The effects are not always immediately apparent. Here, it manifests itself in a lack of physical coordination in these school children. Many of them will grow into adults whose creativity and productivity have been compromised forever. Today, we have the means to protect everyone. Because iodated salt is highly vulnerable to moisture and sunlight, it must be tested for iodine losses in its voyage from the factory to the home. This calls for the training of inspectors and technicians to collect and test the salt. Inevitably, enforcement is a key component of any strategy. It needs to be supported by the ability to easily test the iodine content of salt samples. Efforts are being made in several countries to develop not only a field testing kit, but a home-based testing procedure. In Indonesia, a simple technique has been evolved using simple indigenous materials found in the home, like the cassava root. The mixture turns blue. Its shade provides an indication of the approximate iodine content of the salt. Most landlocked countries have to import all their salt, as most salt is produced in coastal areas. Salt farms in the developing world tend to be very small, and salt farmers barely able to scrape a living. The salt is easily sold directly to neighboring populations. Despite legislation, large quantities of salt can remain unidated. If universal iodation is rigidly enforced, it is the small producer who risks penury. 
unless it's here in Chittikaran in India. They organize themselves into a cooperative. Changed the social setup of the village and the workers themselves and the community as such. Those people who felt themselves some 40 years back, four decades back, those who felt themselves as slaves, today they are masters, managing with all humbleness. A society as this society has reached a position as if not only the benefit goes to the workers themselves or the shareholders, it has become the property of the community now. Drawing the salt producer into the refining and iodation chain has proved difficult. The cost of iodation can become an important factor in parts of the world where per capita incomes are often less than a hundred dollars a year. As both salts compete in the marketplace, often illegally, a difference of five cents in a purchase can prove critical. Demand creation is as important as ensuring the adequate supply of quality iodated salt. Educating the community so that there is simultaneously a demand pull for control measures needs a sensitivity to local customs, professionalism that uses appropriate media. Virtually all Asian countries are committed in principle to iodine supplementation through universal salt iodation. However, it doesn't always find priority on political agendas as other more immediately populist development priorities compete for limited budgets. National salt iodation programs call for a national commitment, infrastructure, time and capital, even if relatively small, to impact. Meanwhile, the scourge does not wait. I came to live in this house as an orphan relative and was married off to Amin. People find him abnormal. That hurts me. He is a good husband. I help him with his work because he cannot manage in his own. I'm grateful that because of the IDD control program, at least my three children are normal. Prevention for over 500 million people in Asia alone is urgently needed. Iodized oil injections offer protection for up to five years. <coughs> Though there are inherent constraints in their white use, they have been successfully used for limited interventions in high-risk areas. They are expensive and difficult to administer to large populations without their own healthcare infrastructure. But it is frequently in demand in cultures where an injection has come to be associated with an instant cure. Anasur Rahman is five years old, a cretin, caught in the web of poverty and the doors of perception through which he sees a different light. He survives almost despite his environment and lives without the capacity for any recognizable initiative. For him, it is too late. But it is possible to ensure that no one like him is ever born again. They're facing the so many iodine deficiency cases in here. But in our city, the drinking water is the so polluted and uh, so that because a lot of people are facing the problems of disease like typhoid, cholera and uh, worms and uh, other so many sickness in here. So that because we want to say for the, our government and our local ministry administration to treat our the drinking water and solve our problems. It is no coincidence that many of the worst 
iodine deficient areas of the world are also the most economically deprived. That deprivation can frequently stem from the very handicaps that an iodine supplementation program seeks to reverse. It is a program that needs to and can reach out to millions of people without waiting for advances in other areas. The People's Republic of China, its political structure and highly regulated economic system have been able to implement a successful, if selective, IDD control program. A national strategy uses a combination of iodated salt with iodized oil injections and oral capsules targeting known endemic areas, Jiziang, in the northeast of China. A model for IDD control. An aggressive program was launched here in 1978 when 77% of the population had goiter and more than 11% were cretins. Nearly a decade later, not a single child is born cretins. There have been no new cases of goiter. The primary thrust of the control strategy has been on salt iodation. Salt is iodated at the county level. In China, this is both economic and efficient. As the salt is iodated close to retail outlets, a lower level of iodation is possible. Losses are minimized during transportation and it is targeted at people who need it most. While ten years ago, no brides were to be found willing to marry into what was known as the village of idiots, today it is a different story. Okay. Newlyweds get a free injection of iodized oil as a wedding gift from the government. This protects the mother for up to five years and the fetus should she become pregnant. Intervention in China has been multi-pronged. The iodine supplementation strategy uses all the available methods. Salt, oil injections and capsules. These are cheaper and easier to administer though they have to be given more frequently and their efficacy is still being evaluated. Zhang Mei is 37 years old, a cretin, a reminder of the scourge that plagued Jiziang once. Her younger sister is 21, also a cretin, but rehabilitation has helped her find expression in art. Before the government began its program, it was very common to have retarded children. I have a son who was born six years ago. He is normal. If the program had begun earlier, I could have avoided the burden of cretinous children. But now I have to make the best of it. We are happy that the whole village has become so prosperous. It helps us cope. Where no industry existed, there are now two factories. The per capita income has increased 12-fold. Today, even cretins have become productive members of the community. The academic performance of Jiziang schoolchildren has risen from the lowest in the country to third in the county. Oh. 
养育。The transformation of the Jiziang population was completed by the setting up of a school for cretins to help rehabilitate them. Iodine deficiency is not unique to Asia or the developing world, nor is it of recent occurrence. This is an asylum in northern Italy. Where the oldest cretin is 70 years old, it was once believed that because populations in developed countries got their food from multiple sources, they were less likely to suffer from iodine deficiency. The reappearance of goiters in populations not regularly using iodated salt has emphasized the imperative of a universal intervention. The key to the eradication of IDD is concerted action at national levels, with the central body orchestrating the functioning of different departments responsible for food and nutrition, communication, health, transport, industry, and their enforcement agencies. It calls for a national commitment to impel change and support from and cooperation between specialists around the world. Wherever we are, the scourge of iodine deficiency demands a time-bound commitment for its eradication. But it will have to be an ongoing program. For the soil and water, the natural sources of our iodine are being increasingly depleted. We are all at risk. Ram Nevas is 12 years old, academically two years behind. And still near the bottom of his class, he is a slow learner, not always able to even recall three or four-digit numbers. Two, one, seven, two. Two, one, seven, two, one. Two, three, four. Two, three, no. Two, three, no. Two, three, four. Five, three, one. पांच तीन दो 